We're going live. It's, it's our next at? session here with the DJ News Virtual Expo. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. If you've been watching some of the other the segments, we've had a lot of great stuff. We've had some great discussion, great ideas shared, and now we're going to learn something about some speakers. This is something you've seen some of our videos where we've talked about the different electric voice lines of speakers. And Mike Dussault, who is a product specialist with electric voice and is the man who has all of the answers, is joining us. And I've got Jeremy Breck over there. We're going to jump over to the guys. Jeremy, take it away. All right. Well, awesome. Thank you, John. And uh, thank you, Mike, for coming out here and mm -hmm. showing us your magic. Uh, the stuff you have is, is incredible. Uh, I've, I've always been a very huge advocate when it comes to the Electro Voice line. I started back when it was the big Darth Vader <laughs> of, I think, the SX500s, That's I think it one. was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but before we get started, I, I wanted to make sure we had this disclaimer in here because uh, a lot of DJs, when you're when you're doing your, your toasts for your brides and your grooms, they're always saying, you know, you got to hold the microphone nice and close. So before we get into these speakers, let's talk about this amazing microphone that you have first. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's one of the best uh, microphones on the planet. You'll see it uh, all the time, pretty much any news event. This is an RE50B, so it's one of the broadcast standards. Uh, Electro Voice is very strong in broadcasting microphones. Um, you'll probably see RE20s or 27s, RE320s uh, in radio stations all over the place. But this is a field microphone uh, built to be an interview mic. That's exactly what it was intended to do. So it, uh, it actually is an omnidirectional pattern. So a little bit different from what DJs are used to. DJs are always in an environment where they're reproducing uh, their voice in the same room. So anytime you do that, uh, you've got the opportunity to create feedback, which th therefore most microphones that DJs use are a little more directional, uh, either cardioid, supercardioid, hypercardioid sometimes. Uh, but that's going to focus the pickup pattern closer to where you're pointing the mic. Now, of course, uh, for a reporter in the field, you know, you're in a scrum, you want to stick that uh, you know over somebody's head and hope you're getting some quality audio so uh, and because you're not reproducing that audio right there at, at the scene uh, it's okay to have it omnidirectional it's picking up in all directions uh, fairly equally so um, now good mic placements always better the closer you have it the louder it will be but uh, this thing's built to be very forgiving when it comes to uh, uh, to picking up the source intended so cool yeah. so one one more thing I want to add or I want to ask about this um, as as a entertainer or a DJ, how can this mic really help us out in the field? Well, in the field, I, I would use this microphone um, if there's ever an opportunity to uh, to actually capture audio, you know, at, at your event. I know uh, a lot of DJs have been uh, uh, interviewing their brides and grooms and things like this for playback during the event. Uh, so I would use it for that. Um, for the night of, if there's ever an opportunity to, uh, to uh, mic up, uh, let's say, a ceremony, this would be an excellent uh, microphone to do that because it's got such a broad range. You're not going to mic up every individual person, the officiant and the uh, the bride, the groom, and, and whoever else is reading. You're probably not going to do that. So right. this would be a good safe bet to throw one up there on the stage somewhere or the uh, the altar, uh, wh whatever you call the uh, uh, where you're getting married, I guess. And, 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 and <laughs> I, I don't know. This altar was right. <laughs> is that the right word? I don't know. Altar. Nailed it. <laughs> we'll good. call it that. Uh, but at, at any at any rate, this would be a great uh, choice for, for uh, ceremony miking. So how about instrumentals? Instrumentals, if you have a string quartet, again, is that a, a great option for something like this? Absolutely. I mean, it was, it was this one, uh, as far as pickup pattern is concerned, yes. Um, you could certainly use it uh, for, for uh, you know, any type uh, where placement, uh, you need forgiving placement. Um, you know, for real critical listening, um, I, you know, this is tailored to the human voice uh, more than anything. Okay. Um, so you could use it for the instruments and, and get decent results results, um, but if it was real critical audio and you really wanted to hear those instruments shine the way they should, you'd, sure. you'd want to get in a little bit deeper. But, um, you know, this is kind of, uh, I would call it uh, uh, more of a, a, a grenade style approach. You just got to get it close yep. and you'll have pretty good good, uh, good results. Cool. And since I can't zoom in on this thing from way over here, why don't you tell us the, the model on this Yeah, this one is an time. RE50B, um, which is kind of the standard. If you want one with slightly hotter output, uh, uh, there's an RE50NDB, which has a neodymium magnet, 
um, which will be a little more sensitive uh, and have a higher output uh, than this one here. So sounds like a superhero. Yeah, and actually this year we actually just exactly right. <laughs> we actually just came out with uh, long handle versions of these also okay. uh, this year. So if you're if you're extra far away in in the scrum of reporters, uh, this should uh, do a good job for that also. Awesome. Well, we're not here to talk about mics, but uh, hey, you know. I, I, I'm, I'm up for anything. Man. Oh, that was all. great. I, and that's that's exactly why we're holding the microphone down here and not up here. So we're going to start off. Tell us a little bit about what we're going to do today. Well, I wanted to really uh, take this opportunity. As you know, I think Electro Voice has, has done a really good job in the last four or five years of every year we're coming out with some new speakers and and to our own uh, detriment I think we've we've maybe confused a lot of people well which one do I need mm -hmm. um, the good news is is that there's a wide variety of price points features and things like that so I wanted to take this opportunity to try to walk you through maybe the differences between the four main families that we have and um, point out uh, you know at what point am I gonna want to look at the next level or the next level or you know maybe the entry level one is just right for me um, so there's a variety of options here um, you know I, I think we've given um, our customers a lot of choices and uh, that certainly is, is is always a good thing um, so hopefully just creating some clarity cool and actually I want to go back to when we did DJ Expo uh, back in August we actually did a seminar called quality plus quality equals quality the better quality of equipment you get makes you a better quality performer which is going to give you a quality income so that's kind of a little uh, what we're going to do here as well so let's start off with the base let's let's start at the beginning of it all yeah what do we absolutely. have here well this is uh, the ZLX series this is the ZLX 15p um, and and as you kind of said that you know although it's our entry level and our uh, you know, starting point to our powered uh, powered uh, loudspeaker family. Um, it's certainly uh, a, a class beyond uh, many of our competitors, uh, e even their highest lines. So, um, w whenever comparing loudspeakers, I always encourage everybody to to really compare uh, at price points because it's sure. not fair to to uh, compare a, a two thousand dollar <laughs> speaker with a three hundred dollar speaker. Um, at the same time. Um, you know, as long as you're within, you know, I would say, you know, 100, 200 bucks, you know, uh, then you start narrowing it down to, hey, I, I need a 15 inch two way. So, you know, what's kind of in that price range? And then let's look at it that way. So, sure. And um, just to kind of give a comparison to everybody, every speaker here is a 15, uh, 15 size, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Every, everything I brought here today is a 15 inch two way. Um, so it's kind of um, the go to uh, standalone box for a lot of uh, DJ applications um, you know it, it's kind of the in-between if you're using subs you could get away with maybe a little bit less but I tend to lean towards the 15 uh, as a standalone just because of the uh, the increased low-end response of course and then also if you're not if you're not familiar with the EV line Electro Voice puts the P on the back because that it basically tells you that it's a powered speaker because you do have a lot of these in a non-powered speaker as well is that correct that's right uh, all of these are available in passive versions uh, with the exception of our uh, of our flagship the ET of course. Uh, but everything else, <laughs> exactly, and it's just powered only. We want to take the uh, guesswork out of your hands. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, the ZLX 15P, this was an, uh, introduced uh, in the ZLX family about uh, almost two and a half years ago now, um, and since its launch has been the number one selling series of powered loudspeakers in the world. Um, by far uh, the most value and best bang for the buck um, that you can simply find in the marketplace. Um, there's no doubt that the way this thing was built, um, you know, honestly, our engineers kind of screwed up. They overbuilt it, <laughs> and then they uh, they overshot the price point. Um, but you know, our sales team held held firm and said, nope. We're not raising the price. We need that price for our customers, and that's what we did. So the the end is a, uh, uh, the end result is just a tremendous um, value uh, for our customers. It's available uh, as a 15 or a 12 inch version, and really the, some of the key things that I'll point out to you is really going to be just the the look of it. We spent a lot of time on uh, actually the industrial design. There's a design firm uh, built out of uh, out of Chicago uh, that helped us with the look of the speaker, uh, chamfered edges, nice full face grill. Uh, we even uh, went away from the standard uh, perforation pattern on the grill from circles that you'll see a lot of times to more of actually an oval or a brick looking shape and that's actually just a subtle uh, indicator that this is you know a, a strong you know well-built box. Um, if you look at just the clean uh, 
the, the clean construction of the box, um, some really ergonomic features that we built in. Actually, has three handles on the uh, on the uh, the speaker, and, and I think our, our our friend Mitch Taylor was uh, actually showing us how, how handy those things come into play. We'll we'll get him to do some uh, he's, presses. He's with so later. strong. Yeah, yeah exactly. But uh, <laughs> it gives you a million different ways to 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 carry this thing around and to get it up on a tripod or whatever you're doing with it. It's very flexible. And how much how much does this, does this unit weigh? Uh, you know, I'd have to double check the specs. Mitch, how much does this unit weigh, Mitch? <laughs> Ten pounds? I'm gonna guess five 30, pounds. Seven, <laughs> seven, I think, off the top of my head. Is that what you can bench press? Okay, so about thirty-seven pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> so what someone who buys this speaker, what is the what is the number one feature that they look for when they're buying this speaker? I would say uh, value is, is really uh, this is a great all-around box for pretty much any application you can throw at it. Um, it's real only limitation when you come to start comparing to some of our other families is really going to be just output. Okay, because it's an entry level uh, for our family, um, it, it's only going to reach uh, outputs that are going to be capable, I would say, of neighborhood of 200 to 300 people. You know, smaller events, you know, in, in, in that range. Um, if you need more than that, then you definitely want to start stepping up. Um, but as far as value is concerned, uh, this is the box. It still has that great EV sound. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing that I'll, I'll show you as we demo these boxes uh, as we move on is that uh, they're all voiced very similarly. Um, they'll all sound and have that EV sound. Real natural vocals, nice deep lows, crisp highs. You get the full spectrum of, of sound uh, in all of our boxes, but it's really output that really starts taking off as you move up the line. So. So I know a lot of these are also going to have kind of the same flexibility. Tell us about the flexibility of this fi uh, of this of this unit here. Is this because uh, I know a lot of these can be used as wedges as well. Yep. Um, some can be flown. Some can be you know put on tripods. Uh, this is obviously probably more of a tripod type unit. But yep. where else do you see this in an application? Yeah, this is uh, mostly a portable box. Uh, there is a, a U bracket available, so you can remove these two handles and actually get a U bracket if you're going to install it. Um, very limited flexibility as far as how you can aim it at that point, but um, uh, it is possible to at least hang it for a, for a quick, dirty install. But for most of the applications, yeah, it's going to be portable. Um, you will see that there is indeed a monitor angle uh, built into the side, so you can lay it down as a wedge. Uh, it has these feet right in the side to keep it from, from rubbing on, on, the, on the ground itself, which is really nice. Um, but but the beauty of this and why ZLX was really a game changer, we were the first ones to include uh, what we call our Quick Quick Smart DSP, and this has a basic level of signal processing built right into the box with a really easy, intuitive uh, user interface. If you've ever used a, an iPod, uh, well, I guess one of the old iPods like me with the the click wheel, not not one of those fancy touch deals, you know. Uh, um, but if you've ever used one of those, you, you certainly know how to access this menu. Um, looking at the back of the speaker, the Inputs uh, both have combo jacks, uh, quarter inch XLR, uh, plus an output and a stereo mini three and a half millimeter. Yeah, I think uh, that's one of the in. things that I noticing noticing on this box. Uh, I love the fact that there's an aux in, and I mean a lot of us when we're doing ceremonies and we're doing outdoor events, and all we need is that uh, iPod from 19. N n never mind. Uh, <laughs> 2004. 2004. So <laughs> when you can plug that in there and you have that flexibility of you know not having all those extra cables going to a, a quarter inch to an RCA to I mean, just having that piece in there is a great feature. So, great box. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. And then once you dig into the, the menu, obviously, you've got uh, input metering right here on the LCD screen, which is great. You've got a master output. Um, you've got individual level control over both of the inputs here. So, uh, it actually serves as a great onboard mixer right out of the box. Um, and then once you dig in, you've got uh, control functions. You've got presets for, uh, you know, is it playback music? Is it live sound? Is it a speech only setting uh, or is it kind of a club feel where you've got that uh, really uh, extended low end uh, that you want out of the box? So basically that becomes the EQ. It basically specializes the EQ to those specific uh, those specific uses. Exactly right. Both mode and location are going to be basically EQ presets. If you don't want to deal with, oh, my uh, low end should be plus three here or minus one there, um, it's basically just a quick way of saying this is what I'm doing and giving you a quick way 
way of accessing um, some parameters real easily. Of course you do have uh, individual control over treble and bass here as well and then you've got crossover slopes with again uh, presets for those crossovers at 80, 100, 120 hertz uh, as well as presets for the subwoofer uh, in our LiveX family. There is no subwoofer uh, in the ZLX family um, but you've got some flexibility there also. So let's go back into that sub for a second because right now we have sub off. Basically right. you're saying I'm using this speaker without a sub at all. Right. Now when you click into it, go ahead and go, ahead and go into the options there, mm -hmm. um, you have an 80 hertz, you have 100 hertz and 120. Mm -hmm. um, now is that actually creating the bass at those levels in this unit or are you saying I am now putting a sub with this unit at those levels? Yeah, that's saying I'm using a subwoofer and that is the frequency uh, or the crossover point in which I'm going to divide the frequencies. So yeah. if I set my crossover to let's say 100 hertz, it's going to take the frequencies from 100 hertz up and send it to this guy okay. and everything 100 hertz and down to the subwoofer. So this will probably mainly or probably be used the most with what level would you say? Is going to be the most common. Uh, as far as which within the hertz, or if they if which they use frequency the sub, would you yeah. use for which sub? Yep. Um, it, it's a lot of that has to do with taste, your own personal taste, uh, and also to do with what subwoofer you're using. If it's a really compact sub, uh, say our uh, ZXA1 sub, for instance, it's just a 12 inch mm -hmm. compact little guy. Because that's a little guy, it's not capable of really hitting low, low ends. frequencies. Yeah. So in that instance, I would actually um, use a high higher crossover point uh, at say 120 hertz so I'm sending some higher frequencies to the sub and I'm letting this do some work uh, there also so um, it kind of depends on which sub you're using um, that's kind of another whole ball of wax but but generally that'll speaking, be next time exactly uh, we'll get a little deeper on that some other time uh, but uh, that's also why then we we did build in some presets um, for uh, actual uh, sub names like the ELX 118P. Sure. So you don't have to worry about which one should I use. You just select the sub you have and away you go. So the, the ZLX obviously has a lot of features. These also have a lot of features that are similar to this. Some of them have a little bit more features. Absolutely. Let's start going into those. Sure. And then when we're done with everything, we're actually going to do a little sound walkthrough so you can hear everything um, just rock and fire. So let's, uh, let's go into our next one here. Yeah, this is the LiveX series. So this is the ELX 115P. Uh, uh, and we came out with this one actually before we came out with ZLX. So this is the oldest of the family uh, and this was priced right in the, in the mid price point. So this one was made to be pretty accessible for everybody. You'll see it has a slightly different look from the other boxes because it was prior to us uh, really going along with a, a new style guide for our brand here. Um, so you'll see a light up logo. This can be turned on or off uh, by the way. Um, but a different look. What you're really getting with Livex uh, box here is a step up in output uh, and construction material. Okay, This is a wood box now. Um, now at this price point on up, uh, all the boxes are, are made of, of wood. Um, so th that'll be a lot more rigid. So it's capable of, of uh, you know, a plastic box has a tendency to flex a little bit uh, as that woofer is moving. So uh, you'll actually lose a little bit of output that way. Um, in addition, it's, it's a lot less resonant than, than many plastic boxes are. So um, I'm glad you brought that up because that was actually one of the questions I know mm -hmm. a lot of people ask, you know, what's the difference between a plastic box and a wood box? Right. And the fuller sound that you get with a wood box, that's obviously the number one purpose and the number one reason. Yeah, for the most part, um, you know, I would say construction and, and, and just uh, durability. Um, but what you gain there with wood, you also give up in, in weight savings, of right. course, also. So uh, a well-built plastic box uh, like our ZLX, um, you know, there's, there's no problem. There, it still sounds fantastic, right. um, and really, what you get—it's uh, it, kind of a trade-off. But everybody has to make that the, their own decision uh, for themselves as to what they want. So, going into the back of this one, this doesn't have all the bells and whistles, the digital readouts, and all that. So, walk us a little bit through this, if you can. Yeah, this was made to be a, a, a more simple, basic interface that 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 is easy to control. Um, not a lot of bells and whistles, uh, but certainly everything you need to get pretty much any job done. Right. Um, you know, the beauty of this, again, with the higher output is it still has tremendous flexibility. You'll see uh, dual inputs, combo jacks here, quarter inch and XLR. This one, instead of a stereo mini, we did an RCA okay. uh, input, so you've got flexibility there still. Uh, individual level control for both the inputs, um, and then a master volume, just a simple EQ switch, either flat or scooped a little bit. And then, of course, across over here, I'm running it either full range or with sub. 
So not giving you as much flexibility as ZLX, um, but also giving you a lot more output. So if output's the goal, um, this is a good step up here. Um, as far as what you're doing uh, with uh, the output uh, section here, uh, actually has a cool uh, feature in that you can decide here on the output whether or not you're sending uh, input one or input one and two out okay. of this output. Um, so again, serving as a nice little uh, mixer, um, I, I would use this uh, uh, in a lot of musical applications. For instance, if you're using this as a monitor, uh, simple uh, uh, guitar singer songwriter could plug in a guitar uh, into channel two, microphone into channel one. You can simple simply mix those levels here and then decide which of those instruments you're sending out uh, here, whether sure. it's vocals and guitar or just one or the other. Okay. So. so again, not so many bells and whistles, but if you're looking for more power, obviously a great option. And uh, I know a lot of the people are probably, they're probably questioning, you know, what's the price difference between all this? And when we actually run these, we'll go through that if that's that's sure. okay. I don't even know if that's, is that okay, John? Yeah, yeah. That's Probably. okay. We John says it's okay. It's okay. All right, cool. So let's go to the next one. What do we have here? And actually, I already know what we have here because I have this and I love this. So tell us a little bit about the EKX 15P. Yeah, this is the EKX. I'm very proud of this one that we just launched it this year. Uh, it's been shipping for only a few months now, um, but this was made to be a step up from the first two families and sit right in between LiveX uh, and our ETX family. Um, so the beauty of this is that it's really uh, in that sweet spot. And this is going to be uh, a box that I would say is built for true professionals, uh, like all of our fo fine folks here in the room. Um, this is at a price point where you know it, it, it's not an entry level box by any means, and it's certainly built uh, with enough features. And uh, the construction is at a point uh, where it's going to do a tremendous job of um, pretty much any application you want to throw at it. You can very easily use it standalone like this uh, and, and get uh, some some uh, smaller events done, um, but you can even scale this up, uh, you know, adding some subwoofers and additional boxes to this. This is a box that would be capable of going and, and doing a fairly large school dance or a prom, something like that, where you're really railing out on it uh, all night. This is where you're going to start to get into a level where, uh, okay, that, that that's gear that's appropriate for that kind of event. Sure. Uh, and John, here's the fan. You ready? It's not even moving. It's not even on. It's not even moving. It doesn't need to. It works when it has to. So, <laughs> sorry, John, I had to do that. Exactly right. Uh, again, I mean, here you have your RCA features, which is nice when we're doing outdoor events. We can just hook up a, uh, an iPod through an RCA jack. Yep. Um, and then also the, you know, the uh, XLR and the quarter inch. Um, that's... I mean, it's, it's a great feature all in one box. Now, this has a little bit more control than what this one did. So tell us about some of the added features in this. Yeah, EKX, we added some additional things. Um, first of all, you'll see the interface is very similar. However, once you dig in, uh, there's a lot more uh, to it. We've added a, a, a three-band EQ instead of a two-band. Okay, so you've got uh, low mids and highs that, that you can mess with. Uh, in addition to that, what we've added uh, for the first time is actually the ability to store and recreate call your own preset uh, right in the box. So there may be a particular venue that you play all the time uh, and you know you always tune the box this certain way because you like it sounds better in the room that way. Uh, well you can actually store and name that preset right in the box so every time you go back to that venue, boom, I'm going to recall that preset the way I like it right. and not have to mess with it and spend that time sound checking over and over again. Uh, I can recall that preset real easily um, just on the fly. So um, the DSP there is, is another level. Uh, we've obviously increased the output power uh, of EKX compared with the other families also. Uh, so we'll get uh, uh, another, uh, I would say, three to six uh, dB louder uh, than the other families, um, which is a considerable amount. Um, we've added fly points to the box. So there are, uh, I believe, six... It's either six or eight, I forget, I'll have to look it up. Uh, but there are uh, M10 eye bolts uh, available here, so you can fly it with eye bolts uh, or truss clamp adapters uh, or a bracket. So there's a variety of ways to fly this box. Um, everything that we've built really, and in, in it, it, it's important to know, um, that Electro Voice, you know, we build everything in these loudspeakers. Um, uh, not just the, the speaker inside the box, we build the amplifier, we do all the signal processing, the grill we manufacture ourselves. 
ourselves. Everything on this box, right down to the handle, uh, is ours. And even the rubber feet, I was uh, actually uh, giving our engineers a hard time because they took all this time to, to uh, engineer uh, the monitor feet and the feet on the bottom of the speaker. And unfortunately, you can't see it because they decided not to put the logo on the outside. But if you were to take this off, you can see the Electro Voice logo on the <laughs> other side. It's a, you're, you're hiding my story. It's my brand. You know, put, put that logo on the outside. Let me see that we built that. It's not an off-the-shelf part. Um, there's very few manufacturers um, that can say that. We build everything from the ground up. And you guys really test the stuff hard. I've been in your, your offices, yeah. and you literally blow this stuff up. Yeah, yeah, over and over again. Yeah, and, and um, you know, when it... It won't do that to you, because that's why they did it ahead of time, Absolutely. so it doesn't do that when you're in the field. Well, we certainly hope not. I mean, we, we, we put a great deal of abuse into these things. Uh, average testing is somewhere in the neighborhood of 10,000 hours of abuse, um, 12 dB into clip. Um, with some horrid uh, ACDC track. Uh, I thought you said it was Taylor Swift. Yeah. Uh, well, they do that. No, I love Taylor. I know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Tay Tay. We like, yeah, get we us in trouble like with that. that. That's all we guys. So. Yeah, edit, exactly. Edit. Edit. <laughs> um, letter. Exactly. But, um, you know, even the improved finish on, on uh, EKX here, uh, we've used the same coating that we use on all of our uh, um, big concert systems. This is called EV coat. So almost like a, a bed liner type material but holds up scratch resistant um, and, and really looks nice and clean keep the box uh, looking uh, looking fantastic after years of abuse so and the weight on this I believe is roughly like 45 is that about right? 45, something 50? like that you know I really don't have them all memorized uh, but but yeah it's, can you bench press a bench it, it, please we're, we are getting progressively heavier as we move up the line um, but but certainly not to a point where it's unmanageable um, I think I could I could probably I lifted them all in here myself. So. You did, and did. yeah, <laughs> and, and I will be one of those that will back this up. This is a great speaker. I've been very happy with our systems. Uh, we have the 15s and we have the 12s, and they both do a phenomenal job. The sub matches well with it, and it gives you a nice quality sound in your event. So let's uh, let's go to the next step. That's the EKX. This is the ETX. ETX, yes, ETX. Um, this was launched uh, about a year and a half ago, and this is our flagship. This is the Mac Daddy. This is the uh, the end all be all this is the holy grail uh, of powered loudspeakers uh, a, a fairly large family um, we've built uh, several different models in the line this is just the 15 inch two-way um, and they're all powered um, but we also make a 10 inch two-way a 12 inch two-way uh, a 15 inch three-way uh, as well as a 15 and 18 inch subs in the family so um, very flexible that way in that you can mix and match and and create a, a you know if you have a few different models really gives you the opportunity opportunity to scale up and scale down your systems. So let's talk about that scale a little bit. You have the 10 inch, the 12 inch, and the 15 inch. Where do you see an application for a 10 inch being most popular? 10 inch for me would be in use as a little monitor or perhaps a delay speaker, um, cocktail ceremony, things like this um, where uh, you know portability uh, is, is key um, but also uh, you know with a minimal footprint so it's not you know, a huge uh, speaker right. uh, but it's also capable of some really really high output um, and that's the beauty of, of the ETX family is even these compact boxes are capable of you know uh, really yeah. melting your oh, face. I know. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got the big rig, so it's easy <laughs> for you. But even the ten, I tell you, um, is 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 absolutely uh, a, a fantastic box. And then our twelve, or the twelve and the fifteen inch, those are a lot. I mean, those are great for your mobile applications, like our mobile DJs. Absolutely. I mean, uh, as a general rule of thumb, um, you know, I would use the ten for for smaller applications, things like that. Um, the twelve, generally speaking, my my personal opinion, and you have to realize that most of these things are my own opinion. And, you know, everybody has to try what works best for them. Right. And, and, and there is no end-all, be-all, this speaker does this, this speaker does that. I can give you some general uh, generalities, but it's not going to be, um, uh, you know, a hard and fast rule, uh, of course. Generally speaking, I prefer the 12 for, say, live sound. Um, you know, uh, a, a live band, uh, I think vocals come out that much more naturally uh, with a 12-inch woofer. Um, and then stepping up to the 15 for, for playback or, or DJ applications. Mm -hmm. um, is my own personal preference, but, right. but certainly there's 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 ways to uh, to to just mix and match and, and do what you want there. So. 
Um, uh, the ETX family was built really with all of our very best components. Um, it has a very high output, uh, 2000 watt Class D amplifier, so it runs very cool, uh, but very efficient. Um, we've had uh, guys that have run, you know, six to eight cabinets on a single 20 amp circuit, no problem, all wow. night long, um, things like that. So when you start dealing with high powered systems like that, that's where it starts to become important um, in power management, things like that. So. so on the back of this unit, is there any differences when you get into the digital, uh, the digital readouts and everything? Is there anything different between the EKX and the ETX? Yeah, absolutely. There, there is a significant upgrade here. Uh, when first of all, just the display size, you'll see is much larger on the ETX. That's because we had to fit quite a bit more stuff on there. You've got actually real time monitoring of all the different settings that you have recalled, um, including just the output level. You know how you're using it right now. It's set with no subwoofer and it's on a tripod. Um, you would even have input metering uh, right there, one and two. Um, but otherwise, a similar layout with the combo jack here um, with XLR and a quarter inch, uh, as well as an output. Um, but once you dig into the signal processing, that's where this thing really lights up. Um, you've got, uh, again, uh, basic functions as far as how it, the playback starts. So is it music, is it live sound, speech, things like this. You've got a similar location setting and similar subwoofer crossovers here um, that you're familiar with. But once we dig into, say, the room EQ, that's where things really take off. We actually have an onboard three-band parametric uh, EQ. Uh, and basically, uh, to explain what a parametric EQ is, instead of giving people, say, maybe control over high, mids, and lows, um, we've actually given them a three-band EQ where you can specify which specific frequency you want to change. So whether or not that's 60 hertz or 62 hertz or 75 hertz, you've got flexibility there to change which frequency and then the cue either plus uh, uh, either boost or a cut uh, uh, so a three band EQ right there so you can get very very specific as to what frequencies uh, you want to uh, tune in so that's where um, it becomes really important because you you can you can get that much more precise with your settings and of course sound that much better so what Mike is trying to say is if you're really particular about your sound and you know what you're doing this is probably a good cabinet for you if you don't know what you're doing don't go into that menu <laughs> <laughs> well the beauty is it, I would encourage everyone to go into that menu and just you know if you screw something up just hit the reset you go back to there normal. you go it's okay I would encourage anybody to play around with it and, and actually learn you know uh, yeah it's a great way of, of really uh, teaching yourself and now right now you're in the delay settings and the delay setting obviously this is something if you're doing large rooms and you need to throw that audio to the next the next level of seating this is where the delay is gonna come in is that correct yeah yeah, the delay is going to be very useful uh, when used in larger applications and you've got, say, satellite <coughs> speakers, uh, maybe a, a cocktail reception area. Uh, you know, a lot of times they'll you'll put an additional speaker, I know, uh, by the bar in the back of the room or things like this. So, we like to be back by the bar. Yeah, we all do. Uh, <laughs> but the, the idea is, is that um, uh, because sound takes time to travel, um, putting a, a speaker up by the main uh, area where your setup is and then setting another speaker way in the back and having the sound come out of them at the same time will cause some horrible problems if you're somewhere closer to one than the other and right. you can hear both. Uh, we've all maybe heard uh, slap back, you know, when you're uh, in, a, in a canyon or a, a, a big tunnel and you hit it and it comes back and uh, it can really throw you off. Yep. Um, so what that allows you to do is uh, is just judge by distance or, or time, actually set the delay uh, for for exactly what you want it to be. So, and that's a whole different seminar. We'll do uh, we'll do that some other time on how to know exactly what your delays are. Um, ben Stowe can probably tell us how many gigaseconds it's going to take for sound <laughs> to travel. So uh, we'll get into that some other time. It's eleven hundred and thirty feet per second. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Ben. We don't. But it depends need you on anymore. temperature and humidity. <laughs> So, so in other words, uh, Ben, you got another thing coming in. <laughs> All right, cool. And uh, so it, we have our delay, um, other options. Um, 
and then basically like the reset that you said that you talked about if you really screw something up because you thought you were a genius in, in audio and you realized you weren't you can reset everything you know, but uh, yeah so we're gonna fire these babies up and yeah. also we'll talk about pricing as we kind of talk about the output the watt uh, everything that goes into these speakers uh, you got the details but now let's hear them so yeah. we're gonna start down here let's do it and, and for those in the room I think I mean, it'd be interesting for me because I know what I hear um, but I think it'd be interesting if, if they would want to chime in and, and maybe do uh, uh, give us their own impressions maybe when we're done it's yeah that's what I was kind of thinking it'd be a good chance for for them to give some feedback because this is an opportunity to hear all four and this doesn't happen too much in a whole wide world so yeah we yeah. want to definitely if you want to see this actually happen you have to go to EV headquarters which yes. uh, I would recommend doing that anyways but uh, yeah we're, we're gonna do it live here on the show so let's uh, let's fire it up so okay well and I'll play the same track over and over and I'll, 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 I'll hopefully I'll, not Taylor Swift because we don't want to get in trouble with that young lady yeah <laughs> I'll, I'll start and actually I'll, <laughs> we do like Tay Tay the, the one thing we can assume is that as you go up they'll all get louder okay um, so I don't need to peel everybody's face off by the time we get up here so we'll keep it at a, a reasonable roar uh, <laughs> but listen to the tonality you will hear subtle differences uh, but you'll also notice um, that there is some some uh, very similar voicing and you'll hear that uh, uh, as you move up the quality of the components and the processing uh, certainly uh, make make a, a pretty good impression here so I'm gonna point the loud part at the people here and, again you um, get what you pay for yeah my uh, uh, I'll pull out my trusty, crusty, ancient, uh... <laughs> the Disc Jockey News Virtual Expo is sponsored by DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. For more information, stop by djeventplanner.com. Top Hits USA, hit music service for radio and professional DJs. For more information, stop by tophitsusa.com. Epsilon Professional Lighting and Sound, an experienced and innovative manufacturer of lighting and sound equipment. For more information, stop by epsilon-pro.com. Promo only, the industry's number one source for music and music videos. For more information, stop by promoonly.com. By Omez Professional Lighting, new color, new vision, new Omez. For more information, stop by omezlighting.com. By Prime Cuts, the number one service for music for mobile DJs. For more information, stop by Prime Cuts Music. Sponsored by Chabay DJ. Value, innovation, performance. For more information, stop by chabaylighting.com. Sponsored by Projectogram. High quality designs for monograms, logos, and other image projections. For more information, stop by projectogram.com. ADJ, pure lighting excitement. For more information, stop by ADJ.com. 160 gig iPod because Woo. it's, uh, well, it's it's wave files, of course. Of course. Stop it with the MP3, you guys, okay? That's my <laughs> lecture for the day. No more of that. If you take away anything, please take stop that away. Stop it. <laughs> All right. So here's the ZLX 15P. And Jeremy, we're going to shut your microphone off so we can get yep. the studio mic to pick it up. Get away to where the boat is from. It takes away. 
Okay, so that was uh, Mike or uh, John. Am I back on here? You back okay, on. cool. So that was the uh, ZLX, and when that one was running, it was running at about half of the uh, the input level. So obviously, again, yeah, not uh, not trying to get the dance party going, but uh, it, it has some great output, some good clarity. But now we're going to go to the next step, and before we get into that one, um, price point on these. Price point on that, the ZLX 15P normally retails or map price is 4.99. Um, there's actually now through December 31st. There's an instant rebate uh, at participating retailers for 50 bucks off. So basically, uh, 50 bucks off all ZLX powered models. Um, so that's a fantastic uh, deal because we don't usually put ZLX on any kind of promotions because it's it, it's the number one seller. You know? Do we have any of those participating dealers here? We oh, do. Hey, Look at the. <laughs> we do have. All right. So go <laughs> going to the next one. Here we have uh, this one again. Is this is the LiveX? So this is ELX 15P. Okay. Uh, 115P, I should say. Um, and what you'll notice here, again, is a, a very similar voicing, um, but more output. So okay. uh, we'll give that one a go. That is just beauty here. That is lovely, isn't it? So you can tell you can tell a lot of the difference. A lot in the in the lower end as going from this one to the next. Yeah, um, yeah with that increased output power, uh, you'll hear that the woofer uh, can move a little more air. So so that low end will, will pick up a little bit. Um, and uh, now one thing we should point out is everything that we're playing here has no EQ applied. Everything is just the factory preset down, music yeah. setting, tripod setting. That's it. Sure. Um, no additional boosts or cuts or any smoke mirrors or magic. It's just uh, iPod straight in. And, and, and so again, um, as you're hooking that one up, tell us output on this one. This was how many watts again? Uh, that is a thousand watt box. Okay. And this is also a thousand watt box, but the increased output on, on LiveX actually comes from voltage rails uh, that are capable of a higher swing. So you can push it further and, and get the output that way. Um, but otherwise, the, the it's we'll louder. talk about voltage rails in more, louder. <laughs> more louder. <laughs> more louder. More louder. More louder. Okay, so now we're going to go into the EKX. The EKX here is uh, actually a 1500 watt uh, box. And uh, yeah, again, no settings uh, applied here. It's just uh, straight in. And, and did we talk about pricing on this one? Oh, I'm no. sorry. No, we didn't. No? Uh, the uh, the uh, LiveX 15 is uh, $699. $699 is correct. Is yes. that right, Kat? That is Correct. She's gonna trust me. It is six ninety nine. Okay. So then uh, we'll go over fifteen hundred watts. We're gonna fire it up, and then we'll talk about pricing on that one. Very good, sir. Get away 
Okay, so that was the EKX, and uh, I I remember when you first fired these up in uh, at your place, yeah. and you had another K uh, that you <laughs> compared them with, and uh, the fullness is is completely. Uh, it was amazing hearing the fullness of this compared to what that was, and like you said, there's no EQ change or anything like that, just both running the same what they normally do. Um, but I, that's what really hooked me on these things, and it, it's a beautiful case. It's a beautiful cabinet. Yeah, yeah, they sound fantastic, um, and and really that that uh, is really the price point we wanted to target. Um, we saw a, a need for us to have a, an offering, you know, uh, right at that uh, price point. And, and, and the price point being directly. Uh, this is actually uh, the the uh, 15 inch is normally 8.99, uh, but much like ZLX, we have an instant rebate available now through the end of the year on EKX. That's a hundred dollars. Uh, it's actually a hundred dollar yeah. rebate. See, I pay right. attention to he that. He does pay attention. <laughs> Yes. Um, so this box right now is seven ninety nine. So wow. uh, compares very favorably, even more so to, I know, and to some of our friends you just referred. There's to. been a lot of talk on uh, on Facebook about this cabinet right now, and everybody is raving about how great this thing sounds. I mean, everything on it. It's just it's it's a phenomenal box, and you guys really hit out of the park with that one. So yeah, great job. If I was gonna say, you know, what box should the you know ninety percent of of DJs be using? I would say this is this is the one um, it's it's right in that sweet spot where it's not super expensive um, but you get a tremendous amount of value it's not on the cheap side either so you know you can lean on it for a lot of different kinds of events um, and really get a lot of stuff done um, with EKX so so 90% DJs the special 10% <laughs> you go into the ETX. The chosen one, yes. Um, for those <laughs> If who you're are, a Jedi, are, this is your option. Those who are truly insane um, and, and honestly are, are doing larger events, you know, um, or, or certain types of ethnic events. Um, I, I know there are some, uh, you know, uh, certain, certain um, you know, uh, types of events that just require uh, insane amounts of, of SPL and volume. Um, and and if, you're, if you're the kind of DJ that's literally beating the crap out of your system all night and you're running into limit and you can never get enough and you're pushing harder and you're pushing harder and you're pushing harder, this is the way to go. Now, yeah. chances are, because you're that guy, you're going to run this into limit also uh, <laughs> but the good news is is there's enough protection built into this box um, that you shouldn't have to worry about that you can rail on this sucker all night long um, and it, it, it'll really uh, cover your back so so uh, before we before we fire this up mm -hmm. when we started over here you said this is probably about a good two three hundred person mm -hmm. this one here Roughly the same. Yeah, a little bit more. Okay, moving up to the EKX. A little bit more still, you know, maybe four or five hundred. Okay. We're talking, if, if not just a single box, we're talking if you're using Dual, you know, right. two of these and, and, and even better yet, subs, subs with yeah. it, uh, a full system, uh, that would be a, a fairly good range. I, I don't always like using that as a metric because Number there's, comparison. there's so many other variables that come right. into play, uh, including Acoustics in the room what and shape is the room yep. and what kind of, you know, music are you playing and and things like that but if you have to do a general rule of thumb yeah I would say you're up in the four or five hundred people at this point um, and e ETX is, is really you know starting there above that uh, and just scaling that system appropriately to cover properly so so we go from the the EKX to mm -hmm. the ETX 1500 watts yep. going to the ETX 2000 watts, 2000 watts. the Correct. other thing that and you can't see it you don't have a very good angle with the camera here but one of the things that I, I really love about the ETX is the dual mount pole or the yeah, dual pull mount? That's right. There's there's one that obviously is straight up and down, and then uh, for those events where you really want to get these up high and 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 angle them back, there's actually a seven and a half degree uh, uh, pole cup. Tilt, so yeah. so that'll come down uh, a little bit, so you can get them up over the heads and point it back down, which is always good if you can keep that sound from bouncing off the walls in the room and things like that. Yeah. Um, it, it is the goal there. Point the loud part at the people. Uh, rule number one. So <laughs> so two thousand watts. Let's fire it up. Let's take a look. Listen. Mm -hmm.
is no place for me. Get away to where the boat is from. It takes away. That's one speaker, no sub. That's pretty impressive. That thing is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really is. I mean, there's a reason why. I mean, starting with the ZLX, we jump up 200 bucks, right, uh, for every line. But here, you know, it's a bigger jump. This one's 12.99 uh, map price. So, uh, you know, it's a serious investment. You know, at, at more than twice, yep. uh, you know, the price of, of some of the others. But, um, you know. You Will get you what ever you need anything for. else? <laughs> Probably not. Exactly. You know, so um, you know if you're good with that, um, I would say you know swing for the fences, buy more than you need, and and hopefully uh, it'll last you for a long, long, long time. Yeah, absolutely. So, John, do you have any questions for us as we're standing up here in front of all this? No, community? I think I think I think now Mike's done his his job. I think if you guys uh, wouldn't mind, we'd grab a couple of people from the audience and and let's hear what their thoughts are on what they heard here. Ron, can you hear us? <laughs> <laughs> How are you measuring the power? Ouch. Say what? I'm sorry? Hey. How are you measuring the power? Do you say 1,000, 1,500, 2,000? So the question was, how are we measuring the power on the wattage on each speaker? So I'd have to look at the exact spec sheets. Uh, it's all, all the footnotes are listed. I want to say it's uh, 20 to 20K, uh, full pink noise, probably. 6 dB crest factor. I, I, I or something simple like yeah. Does that I, that means know, nothing to me? Well, so. no, no, no. There, 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 just, there just is there is no simple answer for that because there is no uh, industry uh, reference uh, trademark. Um, all I can encourage you to do is read the footnotes t for any spec sheet, uh, and then if you have questions on what that means, let me know. Um, I can tell you that unlike many of our competitors, our specs are uh, verifiable <laughs> and repeatable, um, where some are are you know pretty hilarious. You know, if you stand on your head and lightning strikes, and you know if you're a lot of them are measured at 1K only which nobody listens to 1K, we listen to 20 to 20K, right? Um, so that, that's an important uh, thing to look at, but uh, uh, it, it's a real measurement and, and I'd have to look at the exact spec sheet to see what our, our engineers called out there. That's why I usually just tell Mike, just tell me what I need to get. Yeah, and, and honestly, you know, I, I get that question all the time and, and um, it's, it's to my own benefit and detriment that I ever even talk about it. Right. Because uh, the honest truth is wattage doesn't matter when it comes to powered speakers. Um, if I had it my way, no one would ever ask me that question and I would say, you know, I would get in a fist fight with them about why it doesn't matter, you know. But I can't fight everybody, so I have to throw out something. Um, but the answer is, is we don't listen to watts, we listen to SPL. And SPL is a measure of loudness. And loudness is what we want. We don't want a, a, a loudspeaker that is 2,000 watts and achieves an, a max SPL of 130 dB when we can have one that's 100 watts and gets to 130 dB. All that means is that speaker is that much more efficient right. at taking the applied power and getting to the, the desired loudness. Yeah. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. No, I get that. Um, and one of the things that we didn't talk about about, which I love the features of the EKX and the ETX is the subs which we've had a lot of discussion on this the yeah. cardioid mode yeah give us a little just a brief on that because I know we'll probably save that for episode five yeah that's so much to talk about here <laughs> yeah but there's just, a just give us a brief on cardio yeah mode. again we are the only ones in the industry doing this uh, in our EKX and ETX subwoofers um, we have a preset for cardioid uh, and basically what that means is we spoke earlier about DJs using cardioid microphone yep. which are directional uh, this works in the opposite way. Um, generally speaking, s low frequencies are omnidirectional, right? It's just as loud behind your sub as it is out in front of the sub, right? Um, what we have come up with is some very basic presets. So if you're using subs in multiples, you have to have at least two. But if you're using them in multiples, uh, you can dial one of them in with, again, <coughs> a simple preset to the cardioid setting. And, and that will actually give you up to 30 dB rejection uh, to the low frequencies to the rear of the subwoofer. Okay, so that's important if you're doing an outdoor event and there's residences this way, right? And cops are going to get called on you at 10 o'clock. <laughs> well, no, I want to steer the low end this way, point the loud part at the people. That's what it allows you to do. Um, or if you're in a hotel such as this where there's multiple ballrooms and events on a Saturday night and there's DJs all over the place and you're of course have the EV rigs, so you're pounding everybody's head and they're getting mad at you. Well, you can focus that energy 
into your room and prevent uh, you know the guy next door from screaming at you. So th there's a million uh, great applications for that. The, the the bottom line is 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 we're the only ones who have the ability to steer that energy uh, for our subwoofers, and and it's a very useful tool. <clears throat> it's pretty incredible. We actually did a Fourth of July party, and my DJ who was who was spinning at that moment, uh, he was in the back of the DJ booth. And our, our sub was in cardio mode, or mode, yeah. and he had to keep going around there to make sure that the sub was <laughs> working. On? Because I mean, it, it's it's pretty much dead sound where you're at. You don't hear it. Yeah. But as soon as you get out in front of there, it's slammed. You can't. Yeah. You can't imagine the yeah, intensity of it. It's almost freaky because you forget that it's on, and and that's just another benefit, just for your own sanity, rather than pounding your own head all night. You know it. It, it, it wears on you after a while, four or five hours of that, you know, it, it can really fatigue you. Um, so, so getting that, that, again, point the loud part at the people, and yeah. that's the tool we're giving you. And I know that uh, there were some questions that people had asked me, and I actually don't know the answer to this. When you put it in that mode, what is the drop-off ratio? I mean, you, you're pushing all the power that way, but are you losing anything by putting it in that mode? Well, normally, let's say you had two normal subs and you were going to couple them together, right? Normally, there would be a 3 dB increase, which is about the smallest amount of increase that humans can perceive, is about 3 dB. Um, generally speaking, if you press a remote, if you've got one of the remotes on at home on your TV and you have to press it a million times to hear a change, it's probably going in 1 dB increments. If you've got one of those where you can press it once and you hear a change, it's probably a 3 dB uh, change. So uh, to give you an idea as to how small a 3 dB change is, when you're coupling those subs together, that's what you would get. Um, so the only thing you would lose by uh, uh, doing the cardioid mode is you wouldn't get that coupling effect of getting the 3 dB. So okay. you lose the 3 dB, but you're pushing the sound where it needs to go. But you're focusing so it in the right area. So generally speaking, you know, again, it depends on the event. For a school dance, I might really want that 3 dB. Yeah, right. But for a wedding or an outdoor event, I would roll with the cardioid mode, right? Yeah. So uh, it really depends on application, and you, you have to pick your poison at that point. Cool. Well, great question. I know we got way off topic on that one. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions for us? Uh, is the, e the ET at the top, is that the only one with the 7.5 degree socket? Yes, it is. Okay. Yep, that's the only one that has the 7.5 degree uh, down angle. Anybody else? Comments and what, did you guys hear the differences, but but also still heard the, the Where, similar voicing? Let me let me ask you guys this: Where did you hear the biggest change when it came to these four lines? When we went from this one to this one, this one to this one, where did you notice that biggest change? ZLX to ETX. ZLX to ETX. <laughs> from there. To oh, there. No. of course. <laughs> no, from the X. Sorry. From the uh, here to here. For, oh, yeah, that from the there to there. Yeah. No, ZLX. From here to yeah. here. There's okay. Yeah. From here to here. ZLX. Yep. Yeah, because these both thousand watts. This one goes up to fifteen. And again, the price change on this is two hundred bucks, right? Right. Two hundred dollars plus a hundred dollars off of this one. Right. Or is that so it's really only a hundred difference right now. So right now. Okay, so I'll give you a hundred bucks to Jeremy and get the rest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm paying the rebate. <laughs> So, cool. There I think the part it. that probably stood out to me the most, and being point blank to it, you could hear him very well, is I was surprised at really how the entry level speaker, that is that budget speaker, or however you're referring to it, the sound quality was really quite, yes. I expected it to be really lacking. Yeah, well, that's, that's precisely why these things are the number one selling boxes in the yeah. world. The, the starting point is such a high level. Uh, <laughs> It, it's it's through the roof, you know. Um, you compare this next to, you know, we listen all the time to other competitors, and and we'll we'll put them right next to each other. Um, you know, for those of you who have been to our shop in Burnsville, you know, we've got our competitors lined up right there, and 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 we'll I'll put it up against speakers twice the price and smoke it. Um, it just sounds incredible. Like I said, our engineers overbuilt the damn thing, and um, you know, take advantage of that. Um, you know, it's it's a great starting point, but you know. Again, there's more as you move up the line, also. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Does each line has a, have a matching subwoofer, or do you make a separate subwoofer line that matches? The ZLX family is the only one that does not have a subwoofer in the family, and that's because um, we didn't, uh, because it is a, a plastic enclosure, we didn't want to build a plastic sub. Um, it would flex too much and it would give up, it would, it would be diminishing returns. So, really, the LiveX sub. Um, it, 
could match very well with the ZLX, um, but really any of them can. Uh, any of the subs and any of the families, you can pretty well mix and match them, and that's why the DSP was built in to be able to recall different presets. So you've got some flexibility there. But the other three do have a matching sub. Yes, the other three families all do have subs. Um, the LiveX family has an 18-inch sub only, um, and then both of these families, both um, EKX and ETX, have a 15 and 18 inch subs uh, available in the line. And if you heard the 15 inch, you can't imagine the sound and the, the, the fullness you can get from that 15 inch. It's, it's pretty impressive. Uh, the 18, obviously, yeah, next level. It's, it, it takes it one degree further, but uh, the 15 does a great job, and it's a nice compact for you know for being a sub. Yeah, it's a, it's a great compromise. A lot of uh, folks, especially here in the U.S., it's an interesting um, dichotomy because uh, in Europe uh, they actually uh, buy far more 15-inch subs than 18s, and here, of course, Americans we like our big loud sound systems and our, our big <laughs> trucks and big American uh, things, so so we buy big 18-inch subwoofers, but uh, uh, you know, 15s are, are really great also. If you like a nice, uh, almost a tighter sound, a little punchier sub, um, the 15 is the way to go. If you if you want that deep low end, um, then of course I'd roll with the 18. Now, do the 15s also do cardio mode? Yes, absolutely. Yep, both the 15s and the 18s. All the subwoofers in, in both of those families uh, can do that. Excellent. Yeah. I'm assuming they come with like a bag in case some tape the hell. They don't come with, but they are available. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. I, I know we had we had the EKX uh, right when they first came out, and we didn't have the covers. Um, got a little scratched, but once you get those covers on there, they take care of them really nicely. Um, for some reason, when my guys have covers, they feel like they have to respect the stuff a little bit more. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely get the covers. It's worth the investment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any other questions? about the pricing on the subs. Pricing on the subs, which ones in particular? Well, uh, yeah, the last two ones. Uh, the 15 inch sub in the EKX family is $899, and the 18 inch sub is $999. Uh, normally, both, again, have the $100 off right now. Um, the 15 inch sub in the uh, ETX family is $1399, and the 18 inch sub is $1499. Now, let me ask you that. Is, is there a, a good way to pair a 15? Like, if you had a 15 top, is a 15 sub going to work? If you have a 10 top, is the 15 sub? What's, what's the, best, the best way to lay those out? Um, well, If someone got the yeah. 10, the ETX 10, yeah. what is their best option for a sub? The 15, 18, or does that matter? Yeah, if, I, would, I would generally say with the 10, I would tend to lean towards the 15-inch sub. Um, if you're using the 12, or 15 inch two ways, I would tend to lean towards the 18 inch sure. sub. So, um, but really they, they can all be mixed and mashed really, really well. And because you've got flexibility over the crossover point, right, uh, really you can do any combination that you want. Sure. You have really, really nice results. So I would say, um, you know, what room you have to move things around would be more important at that point than boy, can I use this sub with that that top? Yeah. yeah. So. so the moral of this story, and this actually didn't happen, uh, it, didn't, it, didn't, it wasn't supposed to happen this way, but we're talking about the, ET, or the EKX and the $100 rebate. If you don't take advantage of that right now, <laughs> you're not smart. Yeah. <laughs> so take advantage of the $100 rebate on all the, EK, or the EKX uh, line. And uh, John, what do you think? Are we back. still live? <laughs> I'm popping back over here so so I can I can talk to the kids. I'm on this camera. That's right. The they're on on special and we have our our friendly neighborhood we have our representative, cat. Cat from NLFX Pro. Cat's been down here and and you guys if you're interested tonight or tomorrow, you can call up to the headquarters and they should ask for They should ask for Stacy. And Stacy in the office. Not cat. Stacy's the one keeping the four down cats down here. She's getting some work done. Well they can't she's, ask for me, I'm not there. That's right. I would so still ask for you. <laughs> the I still ask for <laughs> Let's see. No, we love you, Stacy. We do. <laughs> but you can go we'll put the link in the in the description down below so you guys can go to the NLFX Pro website, check that out if you are interested. Mike, how long do these rebates how long are they running? Through the end of the year, so through December thirty first. But uh, Merry Christmas. You know, yeah. you want you want them now so you can have them for your holiday party. You want right? you want to make yeah. sure that the Thanksgiving turkey's got a little extra thump. And we do have the uh, EKX speakers all in stock in, in Bemidji, so 
nice. you could have them soon. That's what we're wanting to hear. So this is one of the cool things you guys are, these guys are learning here. We get to hear for the first time, all four. That's pretty awesome stuff. We are with the Disc Jockey News Virtual Expo. Thanks.